We have some guests from Independence Care System. It's an MLTC, Managed Long-Term Care Organization. They're a nonprofit, and they help care for seniors, and that's why I've asked them to come on the show. So first, I'm going to have the guests introduce themselves to you, starting with the gentleman on my right. Thank you, Angela. My name is Danny Perry. I'm the Director of Community Engagement for Independence Care System. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm Rachel Spires. I'm an occupational therapist and clinical specialist with Independence Care Systems Rehab Department. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Thanks. Good so as you can guess, we're going to be talking about occupational therapy. Now, why would I do a whole show about wheelchairs? It's because I just learned that they have a huge impact. The way that the person is sitting in them and their measurements and their mobility issues, if they don't get the right wheelchair, it can cause a lot of damage, including wounds. And we don't want our seniors to have wounds develop because they don't have the right chair. So just don't go out and get any wheelchair. You're going to learn a lot about what your loved one needs during this segment. And so on that note, I think I'd like to start first, though, with Danny telling us a little bit about Independence Care System and what Independence Care does. Thank you, Angela. So Independence Care System is a nonprofit managed long-term care plan dedicated to supporting seniors and people with physical disabilities, providing the needed home care, health care, and social services so they can remain in their homes and be as independent as possible. We're similar to other managed long-term care plans in that we provide array of services. And in addition, we provide a number of different services, transportation and medical appointments, dental, vision, hearing, occupational, and physical therapy. But on top of that, we provide a number of specialized programs and services that go above and beyond what is required by the state, and they're all free of charge to our members. So for example, we have a comprehensive wheelchair program, which you'll hear more about today. We have a dementia program, which we had talked about previously with licensed dementia practitioners. Uh, we have a wound care program. We have a care transition program for people who are in the hospital and transitioning back in the community. We also do an abundance of social programming to keep our members engaged and active in the community as well. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, so we're here today to talk about different wheelchair aspects. Uh, I'd like to talk about the insurance side of it briefly for a minute, Rachel. Sure. Would you share that with the viewers? Traditional insurances look at somebody's clinical or medical so diagnosis. Somebody might have, say, osteoarthritis, and for one person that could be that their hand is sore, but for another person who has generalized osteoarthritis, that means that they have pain all through their body, that they're unable to stand, they're unable to walk, sitting, s sitting for any length of time is uncomfortable. But it's the same medical diagnosis and they're eligible for the same chair because traditional insurances don't look at what, what someone's functional presentation is or what their actual clinical presentation, just what their medical diagnosis is. Uh, independence care system as a managed long-term care Medicaid uh, looks at the whole picture what their medical diagnosis is what their functional presentation is so we're looking at the person the person's lifestyle the family and what everybody does together so if it's somebody who's active in their in their communities people are our parents grandparents they're minding children, they're volunteering in their church, they're going shopping, they're playing cards with their friends, any of those sorts of things are really important to us and we tease all of this information out in an evaluation and then together determine what intervention or what wheelchair we're looking at that's going to meet somebody's life and support them to be as independent as, and as functional as possible. Wow, this is a big difference then between traditional insurance. Absolutely. It's, it's tremendous. A lot of people, when they come in to see us for the first time, they'll say, why are you asking me so many questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they are. They're, they're intimate questions. We're asking people, you know, what do you do during your day? Are you able to get to the toilet on time? Are you falling in your home? Are you in pain? These are, these are personal and private questions, and we apologize for the intrusion, but we really need to get a good picture of what's going on in somebody's life. And then we look at how we're going to maximize function, how we're going to help people participate in their life and, and live under their own steam as best as they're able. All for their own good, which I like. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really, you have a positive effect on uh, the members uh, and patients. Uh, what's the potential negative impact of using a non-fitted wheelchair? Um, I mean, first and foremost, we look at, at wounds, so pressure sores from mm -hmm. sitting on an improper cushion. We look at pain 
pain is a tremendous a tremendous thing. We, we all think, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've hurt myself, I know what it's like. But if you're in pain from the moment you wake up to the moment you go back to bed and you never have any relief, it changes, it changes everything. It changes the way you interact with people and it just changes your general overlook in life. So those sorts of things become really, really important when we're asking questions. And, and when a chair is ill-fitting, it can exacerbate pain. We can develop really funny postures because you're not able to, to reposition yourself, so you start to look like this. It becomes difficult to swallow. It becomes difficult to breathe. It becomes really difficult to get up out of your chair if you need to get to the toilet or back to bed. Uh, it, it, there's so much impact, I, I could probably go on it oh <laughs> at no. length. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, I, I mean, I've been an occupational therapist for quite some time um, and specializing in wheelchairs for probably f about 15 to 17 years of my career. So I know one of the things I was really intrigued about when I came to ICS about four years ago was going into the rehab facility and seeing some of the analysis, in particular the seating analysis that takes place. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that prevents um, wound care? Sure, wounds? sure. When somebody comes in, we, we do a full postural assessment. So we're, we're, putting, we're taking somebody, if they come in in a wheelchair, we're taking them out of their wheelchair, we're putting them onto a mat, we're seeing what their range of motion looks like, we're seeing how their body falls when it's not sitting in a wheelchair, what gravity does to it, what their body looks like out of gravity. So when it's lying down, does the hip bend, does the knee bend, or does, do you cause pain if it bends to a certain amount? We're also looking at their skin integrity, so that is wounds. Um, I work very closely with the wound care team and will often grab one another to say, hey, listen, I have somebody coming in, I think there's a problem, can you have a look? And then we'll look at wounds. We do skin assessments in the clinic. Um, we also have some tools that can help us out. We're looking at pressure mapping systems, which are a computerized technology where we're able to slide a mat between the person and the seating surface, and it gives us a readout on a computer screen that we can capture, um, a graphical image or, or um, uh, even just graphs of it, and send that off to physicians, to insurance companies to look f to prove the success of our intervention. Are you saying mat or map? Map. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It gives us a 3D representation with peaks and valleys wow. and there's pressure points. And yeah, it's pretty neat technology. Yeah, people are always fascinated by yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then um, we're lo we look at wounds. We also look at, so you can, wounds come from a number of sources. That there's the pressure of, a, of, of you sitting. So the bones inside and the support surface, the cushion. So if your cushion is not giving enough, um, then you can get pressure coming up from you, but also the shape of your bones can sometimes really determine how you interact with a cushion. So people who have arth arthritis or people who have osteoporosis, people who have been paralyzed and haven't wor walked for a long time, the shape of their bones change and it becomes more jagged. So if you're sitting in a cushion or a, and you're going over down the sidewalk and there's just little bumps, that kind of micro pressure can really cause trauma from the inside. So we look at suspension, we look at uh, suspension in the wheelchair, we look at the components of the cushion, whether or not there's any tremor dampening to absorb those vibration and try and minimize that kind of thing. And also that, that vibration can translate up the system. If you're always moving like this, it's a lot of pain on your head and your neck and wow. your arms. So it's, yeah. it's very involved. The cushions can be air filled, they can be gel filled, they can be custom molded. We actually take plaster casts of people. <laughs> it wow. looks like a museum in our in our office sometimes because we've literally, ta literally taken 3D images, made plaster casts and we send them off and make these cushions that just encompass and envelop the tissue along the length so you're able to spread out somebody's weight. So a poorly fit fitting cushion if it's too small if the knee or sorry poorly fitting chair if it's too short, if the knees are too high, you can really just increase pressure and cause all of these wounds. Selecting the, the right size of the wheelchair, the right kind of cushion interface will really change the opportunity for, for developing wounds. It can reduce that. Um, it can promote w wound healing. The last thing anyone who develops a wound wants to hear is stay off it, stay in bed. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah. one, one of the things I had mentioned in the opening is that we have a number of specialized programs one of them being a dementia program. We also have specialized care management teams on, with spinal cord injury and MS. And so a lot of these people that are connected to those specific teams are wheelchair users. So yes, can you see. talk a little bit about someone who might have dementia, the type of wheelchair they would use, and also someone, let's say, who's a high-level quadriplegic, the type of wheelchair that individual might use? Sure. Now, 
dementia varies in presentation, so we have early stages and, and late stages. Um, late stages, what tends to happen is someone is, is less aware of their body and of the pain that, that the system is causing them or the pressure that they're feeling. So they're going to sit still. They're just not going to recognize that it's time to move. Our body gives us signals to move very frequently. Uh, if we sat and watched how often we're shifting, it's probably every 10 seconds, may, uh, maybe more. So if you're sitting statically all day because you don't have the cognitive perception that your body needs to move, you're at huge risk to develop wounds. So our, our um, dementia population, we tend to use these chairs that have tilt in space. So we're able to sit somebody like this and then tilt them and it takes the weight off the seating surface, off their backside and moves it onto their back to allow the, all the blood vessels the opportunity to refill, to bring oxygen, to bring nutrients back into the, into the skin and into, into the tissue and it allows them to survive. That's wonderful. One of our dementia, there's a particular wheelchair that maybe a dementia um, member might use if they're not capable of kind of controlling the right. manual or actually the auto wheelchair. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and Tilton Space Wheelchair can be set up so that somebody is able to reach the wheels to push themselves, to propel themselves through space. Uh, most times it's not set up that way. Some people with early stages of dementia will be in manual wheelchairs and they're able to push themselves around or maybe use their feet to, to pull themselves through space in their house. Um, some people, again with early dementia, have been power wheelchair users for some time and they re retain the ability to, to use a power wheelchair in their home or in a supervised environment. Community access depends on how, how advance their dementia is. So, so much depends on, on where and how far the dementia has progressed as to what level of intervention we provide. Some people with dementia are fully able to walk, um, so really they just need a wheelchair for when they're going to a medical appointment for the ease of their caregivers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And someone who, let's say, has a spinal cord injury, a quadriplegic, I know there's something called a um, sip and puff, which allows them to kind of maneuver. Can you talk a little bit sure. about that? Sure. Um, our higher level spinal cord injury, so that tends to be high up in your neck where you're not able maybe to move your hands so much or, or if you are, it's, it's not very accurate. So you're driving either with a chin control where you're moving your chin and have a little joystick up here to move uh, or a sip and puff where it's essentially a straw that you hold in your mouth and then you give it different commands, either a soft sip or a harder sip or a puff or a harder puff and that tells the wheelchair one of one of four three things forward backward left or right it's amazing Stop. that it, it's that sensitive to air yeah it is it's a, and that's an old and well established technology there's lots of new stuff coming in we have some chairs at the far end of new technology we're looking at eye gaze so there's a receiver in front of them oh. that that maps where their pupil is oh. and will travel that way you can use fiber optics. Some people have a head array in behind them, so it's different switches. So I'm going to go this way to go forward. I'm going to go this way to stop. I'm going to do two taps this way to change direction. It's fascinating. And you develop those, those with the person, depending on what, what their capabilities are. We try to keep it as simple as possible. Because the technology exists doesn't necessarily mean we want to go there. The, the m lowest level of intervention is often the best. It makes no sense to go to an eye gaze system when the guy can use his, his hand to drive through. And that's uh, just uh, uh, because it's reliable, it's easy to use. Yeah, but God bless the people who are inventing these oh, it's amazing. Uh, communication methods so that people who are only left with such m minimal communication skills and their abilities can at least communicate what they want. So yeah. that's terrific. Yeah, it's fast. It, I mean, it's an amazing thing. We look at people who, even, if, even a few years ago, and like I said, I've been doing this at ICS for about 10 years, and just how some of the technology has changed what we can do with programming. All of these high-end power wheelchairs, we can program them. So if somebody is able to move just this much, then I can change electronically the amount that you have to move the joystick in order for the motors to start to engage. I can change how quickly they accelerate. You, you personally do this? Me personally with the programmer, yeah. Wow. Or, or the rehab technology supplier, the other assistive technology professional I work with. We work hand in hand. Um, and with, with the members. Some of it's a lot of, a lot of patience and trial and error because sure. we just have to figure out what, what is going to work for someone and what, 
what works consistently. So I've found, like I was trying to get a guy who had foot movement consistently and that was all he had to work with. So we used that to develop a system where he was able to drive using oh. just his foot. Yeah, it's, it's, wonderful. it's really neat to be able to move under your own, own steam. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, a lot of times I'm in the community at different health fairs and wheelchair users will come up to me and, you know, they know about ICS, they know about our wheelchair services, and so they're really excited about the prospects of coming to ICS. But you see them in these standard wheelchairs, you could tell they're not fitted properly, oh. and they're really struggling. And so, you know, we talk a little bit about the program, but I know there's a lot of kind of success stories where someone comes on and because of a non-properly fitted wheelchair, they have a pressure ulcer or they're not able to get in and out of the house or what, whatever the case may be. Are there any just kind of uh, success stories that jump out at you in terms of people that came on and really needed a properly fitted wheelchair to support the independence and we were able to kind of see them through and really help them and make them become more independent? Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so many success stories. We have a number of people who come into us and because they've had their traditional insurance tell them, oh, this is the only kind of chair that you're able to do, really they have a little power wheelchair that has these little small wheels that are hard plastic and it's really uncomfortable for them to use. So they're, they have a power wheelchair, they're able to use it, but they can't get through their day because they're so tired or they're in so much pain. Oh. So we'll have people and we'll bring them in and we'll have them try the equipment. That's another thing that ICS is able to do. We have the space, we have the support from from our vendors and from our manufacturers that we have a lot of demo equipment available to us so somebody can come in and they can try the equipment, they can drive around and they can make sure that they're they're comfortable, that they know what they're getting. So we'll have people, we'll sit them in the chair, we'll try this cushion and I oh, I don't, that, that no, I'll try a different cushion and I've had people burst into tears and tell oh me that they've goodness. not been, they couldn't remember what being comfortable felt like. And we do, we, we accommodate, the human oh. body is remarkable and accommodates to good things and to bad things. So yeah. it becomes very used to being in pain. So the opportunity to allow someone to do, to tilt in space or to change their angle or even just to have a comfortable cushion where they're able to be well supported can change their life. The opportunity as far as us being clinicians and having the time to sit and to go through with a member as they come in and ask them a lot of que questions. We've actually we've referred people straight to the emergency room where they've had surgery within a day or two because we were the we were the people who had the time to ask the question that led to the realization that perhaps it was a tumor in somebody's neck that was causing the pain and dysfunction rather oh. than just because they used a wheelchair. Um, so that's a um, an amazing event for all of us. I mean, no one expected that. Saved a life there. Yeah, from a wheelchair evaluation would come a successful surgery that saved a woman's life. Um, we've had people who've been told that they're not able to get a power wheelchair, again, because of the dictates of their insurance. They had arthritis, and then because they can walk in their home, Medicare in particular, if that's your primary insurance, um, limits power mobility to somebody who needs it to get around in their home. So if you're able to take the steps in your home to get to the toilet, to get to your bedroom, to get to your kitchen, under Medicare guidelines you do not meet their what they call in-home mobility requirement for performance of your day-to-day -day activities. So you do not qualify for a power wheelchair. So some people are really restricted to their homes and you know, once they get outside, they fall, they're unable to do that. So we get people who come in and they're just looking for maybe a scooter or maybe a, a low-end power wheelchair just so they can get out yeah. and be a member of their community again. So they're not so, so isolated. Those are, yeah, so they're not so isolated. So those are tremendous um, as well. Or, or people who, you know, ICS supports a primary chair and a backup wheelchair. So somebody who... Um, has a power wheelchair because that's what they needed and that's what to be independent but all of their family lives at a place that has a couple of steps so oh. when you take a 300 pound wheelchair and you add a 180 pound person into it getting it up a couple of stairs becomes really tricky so having a perhaps we provided a ramp for them so that they could get to somebody's house for Christmas perhaps um, we provided them with a manual backup wheelchair that somebody is able to help them up those couple of stairs That's so there's wonderful. yeah it's it's a really really neat really rewarding uh, place to work yeah so it's, it's amazing you. so before you said uh, you were telling a story of where 
a person was being fitted for a wheelchair and they burst into tears because of the comfort, the change of pillow, cushion, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, was so much more comfortable than what they were accustomed to. Let the, let's not have the viewers think, as I would have thought, oh, well, we'll just stick a cushion under them. That'll make them feel better, right? Because Correct. that could be causing more damage we're, we're learning. Absolutely. Um, Specialized wheelchairs, we, you know, we spend some time and effort to make sure that we've got the cushion correct. But cushions have a life to them. Um, either if they're air, they need to be maintained and checked on a regular basis. If they're gel or foam or specialized foams, they need to be, to be checked. They'll bottom out over time. We'll need to replace them. Uh, sometimes, you know, somebody was just given a chair through discharge planning, oftentimes at a hospital where it's it's somebody who doesn't do wheelchair chairs day in day out that prescribes the equipment so the cushion is not really meant for anything yeah. other than from yeah. here to there mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's at the end of its useful life. So the great thing at working in independence care system I'm in the field a lot but I also I'm in the office and I'm in the downtown Brooklyn office where one of our clinics is located so I get to see members coming in and out I see their problems and I see problems being solved and them kind of being able to leave and get the services that they need and also we actually have members that are wheelchair users that work for us as well oh, and so yeah. we have people that have we have a quadriplegic that uses a sip and puff and so they're able to come to work every day and these are things that they wouldn't be able to do they wouldn't be able to live this kind of independent active life if they didn't have the services that we provide on the wheelchair side and absolutely and it, it's a fantastic thing when people come in and 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 see our staff members in wheelchairs that, are, that person works here yes yeah they do you know it's there's a whole world of, of opportunity once you're able to get outside of your house which is one of ICS's philosophies is is full and independent participation in a, in a community life yeah. excellent and I just want to say we have a bunch of uh, tip sheets that talk about wheelchair maintenance talk about pressure ulcers you can find them all on our website at www dot icsny dot org and I'm sure you'll be able to post that for the viewers so that they can see it as well yes well thank you so much thank for you. participating in the panel today uh, I think the viewers have learned a lot about wheelchairs that we never knew before and it's so important with so many aging boomers having aging parents that we get the right care the right wheelchair and most importantly the right managed long-term care organization taking care of our loved ones so thank you to both of you from Independence Care System co for coming on the show and we hope that we'll see you again thanks for having us thanks Andrew. for having us and viewers you can watch us every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock in Staten Island on channel 34 you can also watch us in the other boroughs at 8 30 p.m. Goodbye now.